Kick is in the air. Coming down at about the 14-yard line. And bringing it back up for Cal and getting a good yardage is Bigelow. Bigelow to the 40, the 50. He's gone. Look at this. 30, 50, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Bears. Bigelow scores on the kick return. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Week 4 preview of the Pac-12 Conference along with the UCLA Hall of Famer J.J. Stokes. Roxy Bernstein with you. And before we look ahead, let's take a look back at what we saw in Week 3 of the Pac-12 Conference. And, and J.J., is so much hype around this league has been it's a league of the quarterbacks with Matt Barkley, Andrew Luck, Nick Foles, Darren Thomas. It goes on and on and on. Last week in, in Week 2, there was some great performances by the receivers. But Week 3 was really the running backs emerging in this conference. The running backs really started stepped up in the Pac-12 this week. It started with LaMichael James rushing for 204 yards and three touchdowns to lead Oregon into a big game. And also you had Utah, you had John White rush for 100 yards and a couple touchdowns. He did a fantastic job against BYU. So the running game in the Pac-12 really stepped up this week. Chris Polk for Washington had his fifth consecutive 100-yard game. E.C. Cefeli of Cal had over 100 yards. Stephon Taylor had a huge game for Stanford in the lone conference game from week three when they uh, went down to Arizona and beat the Wildcats. Do the running backs not get enough recognition in this league? You know, this game has turned into a quarterback's league and people recognize that, but at the same time, you're starting to forget about the running backs, and really, they made a, their presence known this week by all these running backs having 100-yard games, so they're saying, wait, 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 don't forget about <laughs> us. There's a passing game with a quarterback receiver, but the running game is still strong here. Well, let's take a look at the Week 3 action, and first off, huge non-conference win for the league as the Pac-12 sent Utah in a hostile enemy territory, their arch rival in the state of Utah and BYU, and they thumped the Cougars. A tremendous performance by the Utes on Saturday in Provo. You know, that was really surprising. Anytime these two match up, you think it's going to be a fantastic game that comes down to the end, but it was just the opposite. You had the Utah Utes really step up. John White came to play, and so did Jordan Wynn, and they just ran up the score on this BYU team. Historically, a team that's been a team that's put up several points, but that defense just stymied BYU's offense. Tremendous non-conference win for Utah. Another good non-conference win. USC hammered Syracuse in the Coliseum. And, and Matt Barkley, five touchdown passes to five different receivers as the Trojans even though the running game might be struggling a little bit, but their passing game is really in sync right now. I mean, anytime you can throw the ball to five different receivers for touchdowns speaks a lot about your passing game. But let's talk about the defense. I mean, you have Wes Horton, you have Nick Perry guys that come off the ends, and this defense only allowed 47 net yards rushing. So they did an outstanding job against Syracuse. We had one conference game that took place in week three down in Tucson where Stanford went down, the number six Cardinal with a tremendous performance against the Arizona Wildcats, beating them convincingly. Now Stanford suffered a big loss in that game as their linebacker, their all-Pac-12 performer, Shane Scove, lost for the year. J.J., how much does that hurt Stanford by losing Scove? You know, he is their vocal leader. He is their mental leader, and he's a guy that just leads by example. It is a huge impact on this Stanford defense, a guy that makes all the calls being a linebacker. He tells everybody where the line up and gets his secondary in place to be, make some plays and now that he's gone, they're going to have to lean on somebody else to really come in and be that vocal leader and, and really step up and show by example. Let's look ahead to the first real weekend of conference action in the Pac-12 that all is pointing toward the, the first ever, the inaugural Pac-12 championship game, which will take place at the end of the season. And the first big game we're going to take a look at, J.J., the Washington Huskies off a tough loss at Nebraska. They're 2-1, and one, hosting 3-0 and oh Cal. And what's a big tilt for both sides, the Huskies trying to keep it rolling at home. No doubt the Huskies are trying to keep it rolling at home. And a lot of the, the burden of, of being successful is going to rely on Chris Polk's shoulders, a guy that, like you said, had five 100-yard games. And, and he's an outstanding running back. In addition to him, you have Devin Aguilar and you have Jermaine Curse, a guy that can catch the ball on the outside and make something happen offensively. But for me, what's going to tell the tale of what can happen in this game is can Cal's defense step up? and really stunt the growth of this uh, Washington offense. Well, J.J., you see the Cal defense is a big key in this matchup with Washington, but what do you see from their offense? Their quarterback is really emerging as a leader, Zach Maynard, and he has a lot of weapons to choose from. He definitely has stepped up. Uh, a, a position that 
we didn't know what we were going to get at Cal. And so when you look at what he's done with Marvin Jones and Keenan Allen spreading the wealth in the passing game and E.C. Sofele, really a consistent running back that has been overlooked because the passing game has been so strong. The key for Cal is to maintain that balance, and if E.C. Sofele can continue to have the games he's had of the previous three games, I think Cal can be a team to be reckoned with. Next matchup we'll take a look at for this week is the Oregon Ducks, now number 10 in the country, visiting Arizona. And schedule makers did the Wildcats no favors. Well, they had a little bit to do with it themselves. Third straight top 10 team that Arizona will have to face. They get the Ducks at home after a loss to Stanford last week, and they're getting Oregon when the Ducks are really clicking now offensively. A rough week one where they lost to LSU, but two straight weeks where Oregon has racked up over 600 yards in total offense apiece. What do you see from Oregon right now? You know, the Oregon Ducks are really trying to establish some balance likewise. We know that they have LaMichael James in the running game. And passing-wise, Lavoisier Tuane is really stepping his game up. So I think the passing game really taken to the forefront this past week allows this team to be a dual threat. With that, I think that they have a chance to, to, to win their games and, and flourish in this conference. For Arizona, they've hit a tough skid, losing to Oklahoma State and Stanford. They're taking on Oregon at home, and Nick Foles is having a tremendous season for them so far. Jerron Kreiner, they got him back last week miraculously, 12 days after an appendectomy, but they need some help, don't they? They do, and I think it all starts in the running game. After last week with Stanford, they only had 58 net yards rushing, so I think their running game is a key for them. Really open up that passing game with a bevy of four receivers deep that Nick Foles can throw to. The running games needs to come to the forefront. That's Keola Antolin who needs to step up. And the other big tilt we'll preview is the USC Trojans visiting Arizona State. A big game for both sides. USC has dominated this series as of late, JJ. They've won 11 consecutive games from the Sun Devils. Arizona State trying to recover from a loss at Illinois, going into Big Ten country last week, while USC, JJ, they're trying to keep it rolling, and they're really playing some confident football right now. Well, they are. We saw what Matt Berkeley did last week, spreading the ball to five different receivers. The running game kind of took a lull. It's time for DJ Morgan and Mark Tyler to really step up in the running game, allowing them to have a balanced attack. And for the Sun Devils, JJ, Brock Osweiler ha had an okay game by his standards because he's emerging as one of the top quarterbacks in college football. He needs to have a big game and big production from his receivers, Drell Robinson and Aaron Flugrad this week. I think so. I think he needs to stay in that pocket and find his open guy and make something happen. You have Cameron Marshall, I think, who needs to step up also in the running game and make something happen. But for me, this game lies on the defense of ASU. You have Vontez Burflick, the guy that is projected to be an All-American, and we know what they can do in the running game, but Vontez and Bradford and Aaron Oliver, these guys in the passing game can have a big influence uh, against USC. They're going to have to make their impact defensively in order to beat USC. A couple other important games this weekend involving Pac-12 teams. One other conference game as UCLA can catch J.J. Stokes in the broadcast in FSN West. The Bruins visiting Oregon State in a big non-conference tilt. Colorado heading into Big Ten country. The Buffs take on Ohio State at the Horseshoe. Every game involving Pac-12 teams on television this week. It won't be hard to find them. Cal Washington, you can find it on FSN, 1230 Pacific kick. Colorado at Ohio State on ABC, same time, 1230 Pacific, 130. For our friends in the Mountain Time Zone, also at 12.30 Pacific, UCLA and Oregon State with J.J. Stokes on the call on FSN Prime Ticket. Oregon visits Arizona, ESPN2, Saturday night, 7.15 kick, 8.15 mountain time. And last but not least, 7.15 Pacific, 8.15 mountain, USC, Arizona State on ESPN. So for J.J. Stokes, Roxy Bernstein, thanking you for joining us. We'll see you right here next week. This is your Pac-12 Preview.